Hi and welcome to this quick demo of AE Global Renamer. As the name implies, this allows you to rename things globally in After Effects. You can rename things in the project panel, you can rename things in your comps, and you can also rename things in your render queue. Uh, some of you might or might not know, I am a freelancer in New York City and working at various shops uh, with other freelancers. I would say the number one most requested script for me to write for them is a renaming script. Uh, you would be surprised how many times you have to rename a whole bunch of things and it's just usually a tedious, ugly process. So this script attempts to make all of that very easy, but it also packs a lot of power. So let me just get right to it. So here's a sample demo um, <clears throat> situation where I have shot one and I have various comps for shot one. So let's say for example, I just go ahead and duplicate this. So I'm just gonna say edit duplicate. So now it made me a folder called shot two, but it left all of the comps named the same. So this is gonna be the first example of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you the simplest, easiest thing you can do, which is just to search. So you have your scope, which is basically where the renaming is gonna happen. This is where you have your different options. You have the project panel, you have layers uh, project-wide, you have layers in a selected comp, you have uh, layers, uh, sorry, layers in only the selected projects, uh, sorry, comps, you have layers in the selected comp or active comp, and then you have your render queue um, items. So here we're just gonna say project panel items. And the way it works is if nothing is selected, it's going to look and try and rename everything. But if you have some things selected, like in this case, I just wanna rename these, then it's only going to rename those. So I'm gonna search for, and it's case sensitive, so you have to make sure that, you know, if, if it's capital S and lowercase h, you appropriately do that. So I'm gonna search for shot 01, and I'm gonna rename it to shot 002. Now you have two different uh, options here. You can do replace once or replace all. So replace all, if I just hit do it, you can see quickly that it just renamed it. But if I go ahead and undo, if you do replace once, it does them one at a time. So you can see here, the reason it's shifting them to the bottom is because it's putting them in alphabetical order. Um, After Effects is putting them in alphabetical order. So you could, you know, if you want to just do them one at a time, you would just say replace once. If you want to do them all at once, you just do replace all. All right, so now that was very easy and uh, hopefully that's very straightforward. So now let's say, for example, that you actually duplicated your layers like this your comps, I mean. So now you have this pesky little problem that it um, After Effects automatically appends a number two. Um, since that doesn't adhere to my naming convention, the way that I would deal with this is I would say still s replace shot one to shot two, but then I'm gonna hit this little plus, and now I'm gonna get a second pair. And by the way, you can just keep getting as many pairs as you want, so you can just keep hitting plus. But um, at the moment, we only need two pairs. And the, so the first thing I'm gonna do is replace shot one to shot two, and it works in order. So what happens is it does the search and replace in the first pair, and then the result of that search and replace is what the second search and replace works on, and then the third one works on the result of the second one and so forth. So first I'm gonna replace the shot number, and then I'm going to search for space two, so I just type the space there, and I'm just gonna replace it with nothing, so I'm just gonna leave that with nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and as you can see, it got rid of the space two at the end, and it re renamed the shot one to shot two. Fabulous. So um, let's now do some, this is the easy part, and now we're gonna do the powerful part. So let me go ahead and delete, or sorry, minus, so you just get one search and replace. Now let's say that you wanted to change the naming convention. So for example, instead of shot one main, you wanted to have it be main colon space and then um, afterwards you wanted to move the shot to the end here like that, right? Let's say that I wanna rename everything like that. <clears throat> that would be a real pain. So I'm gonna undo that real quick so we're back to the thing. 
But with regular expressions or rejects, you can actually do this. And I'm gonna just show you an example of how to do exactly what I just did by hand, but to do it all automatically. And I'm gonna do it for all the shots. So I'm gonna do it for all of these shots. Let's, let's actually go ahead and, since this is shot two, let's go ahead and quickly rename this to shot three. So I'm gonna search for shot two and make this shot three. I'm just gonna do them all. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move them all into this folder just, well, I guess it doesn't matter. You could do, that's what's so cool is it can be anywhere you want. So I'm gonna go ahead now and rename all of these to this new naming convention. So for doing that, I, I'm gonna turn this on, which is the use the regular expressions. And global, uh, I'm gonna leave you guys the homework of figuring out regular expressions. But I'm just gonna show you this one example, which is I think a really cool one. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to search. What regular expressions does is it searches for patterns. So the pattern that I'm going to search for is first I'm going to search. I'm just going to turn this off for a second. So first it's going to search for um, an sh, and then it's going to search for three numbers in a row. And the way you indicate that is I'm going to do an open bracket and I'm going to do zero to nine, which means any number from zero to nine, and then. Uh, I'm going to do a curly bracket. I'm going to say three. That means that I need to find three numbers, any three numbers in a row after the SH. So you can start seeing the pattern here. And then after that, I'm going to look for a dash, right? Because there's a dash. And then I'm going to look for um, any letter that's a capital. So A to Z, any letter A to Z capital, but also any letter that's lowercase A to Z. And then if I do a little plus afterwards, it means that it's going to look for a uh, word from here on forward uh, until the end. Now, there's also some other characters I need to worry about here. So as you can see, there's some spaces here. So I need to include spaces as well. So you literally just do space there. You can also do a, back, a backslash S, but it's easier to just remember space. So I just type the space. And then also it needs to include these uh, dashes here. So I'm going to also include a dash. So, so basically this says, after the first dash, basically find anything that's either a letter, a space, or a dash, upper or lowercase letter, and that's what the plus means. It's just um, continuous. So that's cool, that's gonna find them, but now how do I replace them? Well, what you can do is put things in parentheses and, and put in what they're called capture groups. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, put a parentheses around the sh and the number here and that's going to be my first capture group so i'm going to basically capture this part of the name into my first group and then i'm going to skip the dash because i don't need the dash and i'm going to capture all the rest into a second group so i put those two into parentheses and so once i have these capture groups this is the first capture group and then this is the second capture group so what i want to do is essentially put in backwards and so the way you recall in the replace field your capture groups is you do a dollar sign and then the number of the capture group so dollar sign one is this capture group which would be sh001 and then if i do dollar sign two it's going to be the second capture group and so for example if i wanted to put the dash in a capture group that would be the second capture group and then this would be the third and so forth but i don't need to do that so i'm just gonna leave that the way it was so I just need to capture the two capture groups and then you can then put them in whatever order you want. So I'm going to start with dollar sign two and then I'm going to do a colon space and then I'm going to do my second capture group. I hope you guys follow that. That was uh, not very hard. Regular expressions can be very difficult, but uh, this I thought was a really neat example of how powerful they can be. And then we're going to go ahead and leave it on global. You could also change this to ignore case. So then this would work as well, like the lowercase h. That's but, uh, and you can actually do both. So uh, global means it matches it every time. In this case, any of the flags would actually come up with the same result. So we're just going to leave it there on global. And, and that's it. So then you just hit go ahead and do it. And wow, bam, in one second, you can see that it just, renamed and replaced everything but keeping you know the shots the way they were so shot three remains shot three and shot two and all that stuff so that's regular expressions and i hope you find that powerful so now <clears throat> by the way you can always undo so i can always undo if you didn't like the way it did you can also do it one at a time so if i do replace one so you can see here it's just doing them one at a time so 
um, it, it rearranges it because After Effects automatically tries to keep things in alphabetical order. But I hope you see the power in that. Now, in, let's go into some of these different scopes. So here we can say layer names project Y. That means that it's going to do a search and replace on every layer name in every single comp in your entire project. So for example, here I have some layers called Shadow 1, and this one here is Shadow 2 particles. So let's say I wanted to just, uh, I'm going to turn off rejects, and I'm just going to go back to my original thing. I'm just going to switch Shot 01 to uh, just be like Shot 01 or something like that. And I'm going to turn off rejects and just go ahead and say do it. I don't have to select anything. I just go ahead and say do it. And as you can see here, the all the layers in this comp got renamed. So that's layer names project one. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. You can also do layer names in comps selected in project panel. That means that, for example, I, uh, let's say I want to just do search and replace in just these comps here. I would select them in the project panel and then go ahead and run my operation. And then finally here uh, for layers, I can do selected layers in the active comps. So let's say I just wanted to replace these two layers here. So I select these. The way that you know the comp is active, it's just going to have the little yellow border around it. So, uh, for example, if I'm here, then suddenly, even though this comp is open, it's not active because the yellow border is actually around the project panel. So make sure that you select the comp you want, and then you can go ahead and say do it. And you can see that it just renamed the two layers that were selected, right? So selected names in the active comp. And then finally, Render queue output file path. This one is a huge, huge, huge request I get all the time. So I hope you guys find a lot of really great use for this. So let's say I'm going to have all of these. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add all of these to the render queue. And let's just take a look here at the render queue. So, if, so it basically just added them to the desktop, right? So let's say that I wanted to, um, instead of the desktop, I want all of these to go to the documents folder. So I would then just say, um, Instead of, so search for desktop, and I would just go to documents. And again, you can use the rejects and the several pairs in every scope. So, uh, oh, sorry, there's also, besides uh, search and replace, there's also add a suffix and prefix. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. So anyway, so here we go. And so just say do it. And as you can see, all the paths just switched automatically to go to the documents folder. So. Uh, I hope you guys find that useful. You can also change the name of the output file as well, uh, however you want to do that. So let's go ahead and undo. And uh, <clears throat> let's see what else. Uh, okay, right. So let's go back to the project panel here and then say, uh, let's switch from search and replace mode to add suffix and prefix. So uh, here we go. We can just uh, add a prefix. Prefix goes before. So Let's say I wanted the prefix to be, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to put a little arrow as a prefix. So I'm going to do a little arrow space. And as a suffix, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say done or whatever, rendered or whatever. So, so again, it's just going to switch to, switch to the project panel item names. And then it's just going to work on the ones that are selected. So if I hit do it, you can see here that it just added the prefix and then the suffix. So that's it. That is the AE Global Renamer, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I think it's going to be a very useful tool uh, in everybody's arsenal. Uh, until the next one, ciao.